Lima, and my mentor is Dr. James Doherty, and we are researching polymer coatings to prevent biofouling. Biofouling is the fouling of underwater pipes due to organisms such as barnacles and algae. We didn't deal with barnacles and algae, we dealt with mussels. We were looking to deal with the zebra mussel, which is located right here, and the zebra mussel is basically an invasive species that spreads very quickly. Um, they're about the size of your thumbnail, so they're very small. And they like to crowd together underwater and attach to different surfaces, on boating docks, on boats. And the important thing is that they attach to PVC. PVC is polyvinyl chloride and it's used to make piping underwater. And these pipes are used to supply water to treatment plants and power plants. So without water, it's a hazard. And these zebra mussels are blocking the pathway for the water to come through. So they're unable to get the water that they need. And to remove these zebra mussels, it's also very expensive. So how zebra mussels attach is through threads called bristle threads. They secrete an organ outside the shell called the foot and it's located on the ventral side. They secrete these threads that are made up of 12 different proteins, eight of which those proteins are included to use to anchor to the substrate. And these bristle threads are stronger than a suction cup, so you can imagine how hard they really hold on. So if we created a coating to prevent that attachment or to weaken that attachment, then we can end the problem with zebra mussels so that they do not want to aggregate onto the PVC. So we use PVC as our substrate. It's a widely produced synthetic plastic polymer. There's the rigid form and the flexible form. The flexible form is found on credit cards and in shower curtains versus the rigid form, which is what we dealt with on piping. We used acrylone and morpholine, which is used to create, to replace n vinyl 2 pyrrolidone, which was an inhalation hazard. That was our monomer to create the polymer. We created cross-link polymer using tetraethylene glycol diacrylate, and what it does is it basically, you can imagine two polymer chains going this way, and the cross-link are crossing it to create a cage. So depending on how much cross-link you put in, depends on how big or small the cage is. And what it creates is a hydrogel polymer, so when you place it into water, it swells up, and if you had something inside the cage, it would end up releasing through. So it's used in biomedical applications and for drug delivery systems. We also use trypsin, which is a serine protease, so it has serine in the active site. It's found in our bodies, it's produced by the pancreas, and it's an active form, the zymogen trypsinogen. And then it goes into the small intestine where it becomes active as trypsin. We also use papain, which is a cysteine protease, so it has cysteine in the active site. And it's found in unripe papaya, so if you want tender meat, you can take papain leaves and skin and put it on top of the meat to make a nice steak without having to buy filet mignon, and make sure to invite me over for dinner. So we created two different coatings. We created one with low percent crosslinker and high percent crosslinker. And then we also created coatings to add some trypsin in 0.4 milligrams per milliliter and then papain in 0.4 milligrams per milliliter, both with high and low concentrations of crosslinker. So we mixed it together and we created it on this panel right here. On the left side of the panel shows low percent crosslinker, on the right side is high percent crosslinker. This is what we did with no enzyme in it. These tanks have papain in it and these tanks have trypsin. You could see when we placed them initially after zero hours that we placed them in the middle and on the borders between different coatings to see if these muscles had some sort of preference. After 48 hours, they migrated off the panel or they stayed on, but they didn't form the threads to truly attach onto our coating. Over here, you can see we did the same procedure. So we put papain in the tank this time and we put them on the, on the coatings and in between the borders of the coatings. After over 96 hours, they all aggregated together, clearly displaying that they hate our coatings. We had one outlier muscle right here, which did form threads, but it wasn't a strong attachment. So how we did this attachment is we took the panel, the PVC panel, and we lifted it up like this. And if the muscles hung on like they did when they attached the PVC, it shows a strong attachment. But when it attached onto our coating, the muscles fell off directly, so they didn't actually hang on to the coating. We did the same procedure with trypsin, but they didn't really move around a lot. They did put some threads, but again, the attachment was very weak. We performed the flip test and all of them fell off unless they were attached to the PVC. So to truly know that we changed our, our substrate, we did an FTR, our analysis for your transfer infrared analysis. The red right here is a PVC. And the purple right here is actually our coating. So this is due to an increased al aliphatic region, which is found over here and over here. And then this is due to carbonyl carbons and CO bonds right here, which is located here for the carbonyl and here for the CO bonds. So we were successfully able to, ch to change the substrate to which the muscles attach. We also did an FTR analysis on trypsin alone and papain, pure papain to see what they look like. We did try to do an FTR analysis on the coatings with the enzyme, but the concentration was too small to even know that the enzyme was present. So this was the research, and if you have any questions, let me know.